I am Dr. Amit Sarah from Jupiter Hospital, Mumbai. It's a pleasure to be on a, on a, another year on another platform on the Diet Care Con Conference in the year 2021. Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Bansi Sabu and team uh, Diet Care Con 2021 to be on this platform. It's a pleasure and a privilege for the opportunity. And I'm here to talk on a very, very important topic of this morning. Uh, whilst I share my screen, kindly allow me just a couple of minutes to set up. Right. So I'm here this morning to talk on an extremely important topic, which is relevant to most of the clinicians and almost everybody here, that diabetes and immunity, which uh, it's a concern for all the clinicians. I think the answer is evident. It is pretty important, pretty relevant. And I am here to try to elucidate why is it a concern? We know it's, it's a concern, but why is it a concern? How does it really affect the immunity? That's what I'm trying to elucidate in the, in the next 20, 22 slides, in the next 20 minutes, ladies and gentlemen. So uh, we know that diabetes is a tremendous global health problem. In the last, in the last two and a half days, you must have seen it from Friday to, to today that most of the top-notch clinicians in the country, which Dr. Bansi Sabu has attracted nationally and internationally, have spoken about this global health problem that it affects the, the entire human body, all the systems involved, and it causes a tremendous economical, systemic, and a physiological problem affecting every part of the human, human body and thereby creating a panache of clinical systems and which you need, we need to address. Uh, when it comes to the immune system, it's an inflammatory state and which affects every part of the system, circulatory system, gastrointestinal system, pancreatic beta cells, liver, skeletal muscles, and which makes it completely dysfunctional. It causes exhaustion of the beta cells, lipotoxicity ha happens, uh, stress-related dysfunctional proteasome, which is the coming slides, we shall all elicit. Oh, this is what to say that so before that, we shall see a little about insulin as a, as a hormone and immune cell. What is the connection between the two? So insulin is a therapeutically important hormone for the treatment and regulation of glucose and diabetes. We are aware of that. Uh, it is essentially required to maintain metabolic homeostasis. And insulin mainly activates the PI3K, AKT, PK3 pathway, which, are, which is all gibberish. We, I know that. But then this is the pathway, basically, which is the immune pathway. And the RAS MKP3 pathway, which is another immune pathway, which extends the effects like, uh, like the decrease the glucose levels. So the moment these two pathways are activated, the immune system kicks. The insulin resistance arises due to low level of inflammation and innate immunity mediated by pattern recognition receptors. So the moment insulin resistance arises, this low, low level of inflammation in innate immunity mediated pattern recognition receptors takes place and that in a way affects the immune system and that we shall see coming. The, how does it affect? So hyperglycemia is known to cause an immune dysfunction, adversely affecting neutrophilic chemotaxis, macrophage function, phagocytic responses, leaving diabetic patients more susceptible to infections and related comorbidity. So these are a few things which we are all aware in our physiology days that we need chemotaxis, we need macrophage function, we need phagocytic function to, to conquer and kill most of the threats the human body faces. And when these are affected, a lot of immune responses are affected. So insulin resistance and hyperglycemia have long-term chronic in, uh, res, uh, features in type 2 diabetes, which lead to severe consequences, including microvascular complications, increased blood glucose levels after in, uh, eating, induced insulin production and secretion of islet beta cells into the blood, and a failure of pancreas to produce sufficient insulin, improper insulin action, or both lead to hyperglycemia. So um, the molecular mechanism of insulin resistance due to inflammation is seen uh, depicted in this pictorial slide, wherein insulin as a molecule binds to the receptor and through gut translocation, we see the natural killer cells, the cytoplasmic, the, the uh, hyperglycemic, hyperlipidemic, inflammatory cytokines and how the entire translocation happens. So we are aware of the, the advanced glycation end products, AGEs as they are called, and the effects of immune cell, we shall try to elucidate on this slide. So diabetic due to metabolic and functional impairment leads to accumulation of glucose and its analogs. Its fusion with proteins and lipids catalyzed by non-enzymatic reaction leads to the formation of advanced glycation end products. And these advanced glycation end products play a crucial low, uh, role in long-term complication by altered receptor functions, enzymatic activity, 
and disrupt the molecular conformation of protein, lipids, and sometimes nucleic acid. The AGE modified proteins interact with receptors and macrophages and endothelial cells to alter their normal functions. And AGE effect on monocyte induces proliferation and also decreases the cholesterol flux through the ABCA1. So these in turn affect to a certain extent the normal functions of these macrophages and endothelial cells. So how does that affect the immune system? So immune system we are aware is basically of two arms, the innate uh, arm and the adaptive arm. Adaptive arm is basically B cell, which we are aware is into the antibody formation and the T cell, which is basically into CD4 helper cells and cytotoxic CD, uh, CD8 cells. The abnormal immune cell activation and subsequent inflammatory environment has an essential role in the progression of type 2 diabetes. So herein is the crux of the problem that the moment type 2 diabetes comes, in, comes into play, the abnormal immune cell activation and inflammatory environment happens in a type 2 diabetic uh, patient's physiology which leads to a progression as the type 2 advances and chronic inflammation due to mainly activation of myeloid cell lineage, example, macrophage, neutrophils is directly related to the induction of insulin resistance. So somewhere in the, in the entire pathophysiological process, insulin resistance, chronic inflammation are two arms leading to dysfunctional immune system. Now, these are authors, Fang, D'Souza, who have uh, India studies shown over the years that patients with type 2 diabetes have elevated uh, numbers of circulating leukocytes that express high levels of inflammatory cell products. They have decreased expression of antitoxin genes and they hence promote the apoptosis of leukocyte. But mind you, these are all animal studies. These are all, not human studies. I have quoted their references. I tried to get in as recent as 2020 references, but they're all animal studies. But they have proved that these in type 2 have shown and to a certain extent and also in uh, in uh, vitro studies in certain patients who cell samples were taken in studies in laboratories in certain patients have shown that they have elevated number of circulating leukocytes that express high levels of inflammatory chain products. So uh, going ahead with the studies, uh, you et al. have shown that uh, uh, when they, they had polyinocytic uh, and polycytolytic cells, a toll-like receptor agonist stimulated the PCBs in Hg medium, while cells circulate in the Lg produce significantly lower levels of type 1s, uh, IG, IFNs, and the PCMs express elevated levels of IFGs and granulocyte macrophage colony stimulating factors. And these and macrophage inflammatory proteins also have shown that type 2 diabetic patients decrease the formation, viability, differentiation, and functions of osteoclasts. Now, these interns, the next slide will show, have an effect on the bone structure and bone healing. That's the reason when a diabetic comes to us with a foot problem, a diabetic foot and a bone ulcer or a foot ulcer comes in. These are the people who have a delayed healing. That's the reason a diabetic foot has an extremely delayed uh, ulcer healing or a, or a why does a diabetic ulcer lead to osteomyelitis at times. Defects in the innate arm as well as, as well as the adaptive immunity arm are supposed to be the main cause of diabetic individual susceptible to infection and thereby delayed bone healing. So the effect of diabetic uh, type 2 is on immune systems, the WBC numbers are elevated, but the elevated levels of pro-apoptotic and pro-inflammatory genes are seen and because of that, uh, they, are, uh, they are more granular and express a diminished levels of antioxidant genes. Innate immunity complement system are also uh, are, are affected and the, le the lectin pathway is affected to an extent. Uh, all of these, if you see now in the subsequent flu sites, we, I'll talk about each uh, particular arm, for example, dendritic cells, their numbers and activities are reduced in long-term diabetic patients. Macrophages, their cholesterol efflux is decreased. They generate more of foam cells and have a dysfunctional aphrocytosis. Neutrophils are activated. They constitutionally release and NETs produce high levels of MPOs, ROS and calprotein. These are all, they, they are pro-inflammatory uh, uh, chemicals, but they are more susceptible to apoptosis. So they're actually just, uh, just keep on dying out more in numbers and their microbial, my microbial killing is impaired. Natural killer cells become dysfunctional and become again more susceptible to apoptosis. So more and more of our own body's immune cells become susceptible to apoptosis and become more and more dys dysfunctional. The innate lymphoid cells 
produce high levels of interferons. Humoral immunity failed to activate the complement system. Cellular immunity, pathogen-specific Th17 cells are decreased and thereby cannot launch a very specific attack. So impairment immune system during hyperglycemia in a pectoral format is what I just was saying in the last few slides is shown here in a, in a graphic form is the same thing what I was speaking about. Immunological mechanism susceptible to diabetes infection in a tabular format. So on the left hand side, all the arms of immune system, cytokine production, leukocyte recruitment, uh, pathogen recognition, neutrophilic dysfunction is seen. And on the right hand side, the possible mechanism for it. How does it action is tried to be depicted here. The immunological mechanism and susceptibility of diabetics to infection because of macrophage and monocyte dysfunction, natural killer cell dysfunction, inhibition of antibody and complement effector cells. Possible mechanism may be due to key, uh, impaired chemotaxis, addition capacity, increased uh, uh, proportion of anti-inflammatory M2 M M phenotype, increased proportion of anti-inflammatory M2 phenotype again, reduced glycolytic uh, capacity and glycolytic reserve of macrophages after long-term sensitization to high glucose levels in the patient's body, lower expression of FC gamma receptors on a DM2 monocyte susceptible to infection and malignancies, reduced F4 fragments opsonization. So these are all possible mechanisms why the immune arm is affected in a diabetic individual. A little about gestational diabetes, because this is an area where a, a woman with diabetes is much more uh, affected by uh, by the by the immune system and is much more prone for infections. Why does it happen? Because hyperglycemia in GDM is associated with an increased placental inflammation. Excessive glucose can stimulate the, the NOD, LRR, and the pyrene domain containing protein 3 inflammasome activation in tropoblasts, inducing the generation of IL-1 and IL-18 inflammatory cytokines. So basically, we all are aware that uh, gestation is a pro-inflammatory state. And, and to top it off, if that woman becomes a diabetic, it becomes more so a pro-inflammatory state. So if you see on the left-hand side, in a normal woman without diabetes, the normal immune response is all of that. And GDM sets in. If you see on the, if you compare the left hand side with the right hand side, almost everything is multiplied. So more of neutrophilic overactivation, more of natural killer cell cytotoxicity, monocyte overactivation, Th1, Th17, cytotoxic cell, B cell, platelet count activation, macrophage, macrophage uh, infiltration activation, more of insulin resistance, excessive infiltration, NK cells, uh, cytotoxicity, macrophage dysregulation. So all of that becoming overactivation leads to a lot of inflammation. And we've seen in the last so many slides now, that more of inflammation, more of uh, dysregulation of the immune system and more of propensity of, of this diabetic individual to land up in infections. So when women with GDM are prone for dysfunction and the insulin mediate suppression of lipolysis resulting in exaggerated FFAs and glucose production and severe insulin resistance. So uh, thereby the therapeutic options in GDM are all those the, which, which basically try to uh, have management of maternal immune dysregulation and low-grade inflammation, which are characteristic of GDM pathophysiology, not only on sugar control, but also a bit of uh, inflammatory control. So to conclude, ladies and gentlemen, hyperglycemia impairs the normal functions of circulatory system, gastrointestinal system, pancreatic beta cells, liver, and as well as skeletal muscles to boost systemic resistance. A hyperglycemia environment leads to immune cell dysfunction. It increases intestinal permeability, which may subsequently enhances the risk of infection in type 2 diabetic patients. Both the innate immune responses defects, including dysfunction of neutrophils and macrophages and dysfunction of adaptive immune responses, including T cells, are thought to be responsive for immune system weakness against invading pathogens in diabetic patients. So in, in short, what I'm trying to say is that as clinicians, we know that a diabetic uh, is prone for infections and may need to control their, uh, their infections. In the last uh, couple of slides, what I tried to prove is why are they prone for infections? Why is it important to control the sugars of a diabetic so, so meticulously? Why is it important to take care of their organ systems why so, so meticulously? Because it is, it is so important to control the sugars because the inflammatory cascade, the immune system depends very, very crucially upon it. Once again, my heartiest congratulations to Dr. Bansi Sabu and the entire team on having a wonderful diet care conference again, as always in so many years and thank you so much for having me here thank you so much i'll stop sharing my screen